President Napolitano, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Well, big vote this week on tuition, uh, 14 to 7 vote at the Regents. You and the governor are sort of at loggerheads on this. The governor is saying the university needs to look for new ways to cut, even though they've already, you've already cut. Uh, he looking for creativity. Uh, you're saying, no, this is important for the long-term stability and viability of the university. Where, what, where is the governor getting it wrong? I think uh, the issue is that the university went through huge cuts, uh, and there's been a large state in disinvestment both from the University of California and the Cal State University systems over the last years. Uh, and the end result is we've done lots of cutting, lots of savings, lots of efficiencies. Hundreds of millions of dollars, right? 660 million that we have hard pencil numbers on, much less everything else that's happening. Uh, we have frozen tuition for the last uh, three years. We've done all these things, uh, and yet we are still 460 million below where we would have been in, in 2007, 2008, and we've enrolled thousands more students. But the, you know, the governor saying so, that. And so, what that means is that on a per capita basis, uh, the state is putting in as, as low an amount for students in California right now as they did 30 years ago. Yeah. The governor says that one of the reasons that they agreed to increase state funding was it was sort of an exchange for keeping tuition flat and that in a sense, this deal now raising tuition breaks that promise. What's your response to that? There, there was no agreement and I, and I don't think anyone believes there really was an agreement. His plan, it's, a, it's his plan, but it's not a two-way agreement. His plan is that for the state portion of our budget, he'd increase that 4% a year. And so people hear that and go, 4% a year? That's a lot. You know, what, what's the problem? Well, our core budget is comprised of uh, what we do by savings and efficiencies and what the state puts in and tuition. And he's only talking about this part. Uh, but, you know, there's inflation, there are mandatory costs, and then there's investment in academic quality. This is the premier research university in the world, and you can only cut faculty and research, et cetera, so far and keep that reputation. But it's interesting. One of the things the governor says is we shouldn't be, UC shouldn't be competing with Yale and Harvard and Stanford, the elite universities. We should be trying to be the best public university that we can be. We shouldn't be raising salaries to the point that we're trying to lure that caliber of academic or chancellor, whatever it might be. What's your response to that? I disagree. Um, this university was designed under the master plan to give students in California the opportunity to get that quality education and not have to go 3,000 miles away. And when you look at what's happened in California with the University of California, and we have some small elite colleges, small in terms of size, uh, Caltech, uh, even Stanford compared to UC is small. And that synergy now with this backbone of the University of California and a few smaller colleges, uh, that's a different model than you have on the East Coast. But the whole um, idea behind creating the University of California was to say, you know what? We should have a public university that is as good or better. It should have public level tuition and cost, and it should give California the ability to compete. But as you know, some of the critics, including some of the regents who are elected officials, are saying that the, what you're doing here is essentially holding the students hostage. That you're saying, well, we won't raise the tuition if you give us more money. And somebody's described it as kind of a, a ransom note. You know, give us the money or we're going to hurt the kids. How is that not right? Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think that's unfortunate vocabulary, and, and I would say this is look, John Perez who said that, and that's unfortunate vocabulary. He's a, he's a new regent, still an elected official. Um, look, uh, higher education in California. Uh, this doesn't start with this plan. This started a long time ago, where uh, as difficult budget decisions were made and things were prioritized, somehow at the end of every session, at the end of every budget, the easiest thing to cut was higher education. Uh, and it, it, it's been easy in California and it was easy in Arizona because it's the largest amount in the budget that's still standing and it's easy in states across the country. And that's a huge public disinvestment. And I think what the regents were saying in this vote 
and it was unanimous among all of the non-elected official regents who've been appointed by the governor and confirmed prior to the two we just appointed before the vote, uh, and the student regent, but everybody else said, you know what, no more. We think higher education deserves a priority in California. Um, one of the things that the governor uh, has said is that uh, <coughs> the, the university needs to be more creative. Um, and I'm wondering, you must have talked to the governor before you took this job, and you've been a governor. You were the governor of Arizona. When you met with the governor and, or talked with him before you took this job, did he assure you of anything in terms of the atmosphere and the support you'd have from the state that you now feel he has not delivered on? Uh, we didn't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. He was in the selection committee when I was uh, interviewed, and it was a long interview. Uh, and everybody's uh, focus then was on Prop 30. and you The know, tax increase. The tax increase of Prop 30. And I think the assumption was that there would be enough revenue um, taken from Prop 30 and provided to higher education that we could leave tuition alone for a long period of time. And the result has been no, uh, not very much from Prop 30 has actually gone to the universities. So they haven't really, really fallen short of what you thought they would do in terms well, of that funding? Well, uh, you know, I wasn't here during Prop 30, but I think certainly it, 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 from the regent's comments who were there at the time and voted to support Prop 30, uh, they certainly believed that uh, that would financially cover the university. And, and you know, you got to ask this question, you know, what are we trying to do here with this university? It's the premier public research university in the world. All of our campus are ranked in the top 10 in different world rankings and national rankings uh, and the like. Um, we're a huge economic generator for California. We're one of the best investments you can make for your dollar. Uh, uh, we admit more low income and first generation students than any other public research university in the country. What exactly is it that we're trying to change just because for change's sake, you change for the better, and if there are good ideas out there, we'll take them. Is it fair to say you would rather just have more state funding and roll back this tuition increase? That's a fair statement. And so the negotiation is on, basically? I think uh, today's vote was the end of the beginning, but there's a process that we'll undertake. I want to work with Sacramento, we all do, uh, but we really want to work in the interests of the university and its students. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about immigration reform. When you were Secretary of Homeland Security, you helped write, or you did write, uh, the deferred action which allowed uh, youngsters who were brought here illegally as kids to stay and go to school and uh, have not, not, not have the fear of deportation. As the president expands that now to others, uh, what impact do you think that could have and what impact did what you did uh, have on kids that you now see at UC, for example? Well, in 2012, when I was the Homeland Security Secretary, uh, we created the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, which was uh, a, an executive effort using the theory of prosecutorial discretion to allow young people brought here to stay and go to school without fear of being deported if they registered, paid a fee, showed they had no criminal background, had done all these things. Uh, there are now close to 700,000 young people who are DACA. Um, uh, several thousand of them are students at the University of California, and it's transformational for them. They don't. They can also get work authorization, so they don't have to walk around looking over the so sh shoulder, wondering whether they're going to get picked up. Um, and now. Uh, uh, as we look at what the president is doing, and I haven't seen the full contours of the plan, uh, but I think it's fair to say that DACA was based on sound legal principles and no legal challenge to it has survived. And so you think he's justified again in doing what he's doing now? There's a, a huge body of law on, under the theory of what they call prosecutorial discretion, which gives the executive the authority to set priorities, and immigration is one of those areas. All right. President Napolitano, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.